Welcome to this video presentation covering an introduction to structural dynamics and seismicity that is relevant to the risk assessment and management of built cultural heritage. The presentation is divided into four sections. After the introduction, the second part gives a brief overview of what structural dynamics is about. The third part focuses on an introduction to seismicity and the analysis of seismic effects on structures. And the last section concludes with some of the more important points discussed. In order to analyze seismic effects on structures, a designer should be familiar with at least the basics of the broad discipline known as structural dynamics, which can be simplified as an extension of static structural analysis that considers time variable responses of structures to time varying loads. By time varying changes in this context, we mean quick changes which happen in seconds or even a fraction of a second. One can imagine the quick load action that takes place during earthquakes, which produces many load waves during a single second. Thus it can cause a repeatable load and consequently damage to a structure or its parts. Usually we can categorize structures according to their degree of vulnerability, where we have on the one hand modern lightweight structures with anti-seismic measures and on the other hand, we need to protect the highly vulnerable, usually massive, old structures with only a very limited resistance to shaking. And it is the high mass and low stiffness which together result in a key parameter of the structures called the natural period. The value of this parameter, when within a certain interval, can make these structures only minimally resistant to ground waves which act destructively on their foundations. As already stated, the dynamic load or motion of the ground, we can call it a generalized load, changes rapidly with time and causes time varying stresses to the important parts of the bearing system of the building. If the period of the incoming load closely matches the natural periods of a structure, it may cause a phenomenon known as resonance, which amplifies the displacement caused by external forces such as the wind or earth motion. It is important to note that the high mass of the structures is usually directly related to high inertial forces as the acceleration is non-zero. Every structure can be modeled using a certain mechanical and mathematical model, the complexity of which depends on the desired degree of authenticity of the mechanical behavior. In more simplistic cases, the structure may be modeled with a single degree of freedom. In other words, the generalized coordinates usually expressing the required a priori unknown deformation. Usually more degrees of freedom are analyzed so that the structure is characterized by the set of characteristic vibration shapes called modes, each of which vibrates harmonically with only one characteristic frequency. Such analysis is called modal analysis of vibration and it is the basis for the more complex calculation of the responses to earthquake motion. Basically, modal analysis is based on modal shapes that are non-damped. This allows us to exploit certain mathematical properties of theirs in order to analyze structures. However, damping is present in the structures, usually in the form of the dissipation capability of joints and structural materials, for example, friction. Positive damping causes a decrease in vibration amplitudes, and thus the question is often asked, how to increase it and improve the vibration resistance of a structure. This is usually the object of resilience analysis as well as part of retrofitting interventions. Damping is clearly required, but the complexity of its mathematical description does not provide us with simple decisions, for example, as to which type of dissipation device can be used in a particular structure. In the simplest cases, the damping is modeled idealistically as linearly proportional to the velocity of the motion. This can be a good start to the analysis of the structural response in cases of single degree of freedom systems. A single degree of freedom system can be modeled using the so-called equation of motion, which can be derived by means of known mechanical principles, usually Newton's laws, or by means of analytical mechanics and so-called energy methods. In its simplest form, it equates the internal forces, inertial, damping, and elastic, with the forces acting upon the structure externally. This equation is differential, which is the key difference compared to static cases where the equations are algebraic. 
The solution to this equation, the integral, provides us with the displacement of the structure as well as with velocity and acceleration. An earthquake is caused by high energy release during tectonic motions. This energy propagates in many directions in the form of seismic waves. The waves have a certain propagation velocity and propagate through the soil in several types. The most dangerous from the point of view of structural engineering are the so-called surface waves that propagate with lower group speed than body waves in the interior of the earth, however quickly enough to cause damage. In large earthquakes, surface waves can have an amplitude of several centimeters. Earthquakes occur without warning and can affect a wide area of people, structures and natural landscapes within seconds, making them difficult yet not impossible to prepare for. There are three main factors that determine seismic risk. The level of the seismic hazard, exposure to the hazard, and how vulnerable a population or property is to the hazard. Seismic hazard levels differ significantly around the world, and hazard maps are a great tool to depict hazard levels across a country. Buildings that are compliant and up to code with building regulations are less vulnerable to sustaining damage. The vulnerability of property to seismic hazards is determined by whether or not it has an earthquake-resistant construction. Earthquake casualties are estimated and determined by the population in geographical areas with a higher risk of earthquakes, as well as the quantity and quality of the infrastructure in the area. Modeling the complex seismic action upon structures is a demanding engineering task, usually involving computerized models of structures, wave action, etc. This is certainly important for the academic environment and an understanding of the phenomenon. However, for simplistic engineering analysis, it is not always necessary to analyze all the details of such action, especially with many unknown variables. Thus, in practice, it is enough to maintain a high level of confidence and to use conservative approaches for the design. These approaches are based on the so-called elastic response spectrum. Although there are many other spectral approaches, which also take into account the inelastic properties of structures and material, this is still a valuable approach. The spectrum, being a function of period, depicts the response values, usually the displacement, showing the peak response of a simple harmonic oscillator that is subjected to a transient earthquake event. It is a function of the natural frequency of the oscillator representing the structure and of its damping. Thus, it is a representation of the effect that ground motion has on a postulated system with a single degree of freedom. In conclusion, we can say that dynamic analysis allows for an understanding of building response to dynamic loading such as earthquakes. Such response depends on intrinsic properties such as stiffness, mass, and boundary conditions, and on the excitation force. Finally, it is possible to mitigate seismic risk by employing adequate seismic design approaches, enabling the implementation of tailored retrofit interventions. Thank you for your attention.